Good morning and welcome to the Great Journey Podcast. I'm Caitlin Clary here with Sensei Marty Callahan. And today he has a story for us called The Boy in the Swordmaster. But first, I think you got an interesting phone call that you're going to share with us, right? Yes, I did. Yeah. Um, just the other day, um, this was a parent who was uh, calling to complain that her child wasn't learning anything, um, that he was bored, that there were, um, that uh, he, you know, he was learning more from playing with his three-year-old friend. He was also three. He was also yes. three, yeah. yeah. Um, and um, that we keep doing the same things over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, and there's nothing really new happening here. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, um, we were about to tell the story. And I, I realized the connection between this story and that phone call. Right. Um, and so the story is, a uh, is about a boy who, um, wanted to learn how to use the sword. Yes. He wanted to become a swordsman. Okay. And, uh, I don't know how old he was, probably 12, 13 years old, something like that mm -hmm. in the story, but he goes to the sword master and asks the sword master if he would take him on as a student. Mm -hmm. And back in these days, uh, a sword master would usually only have one or two students, uh, maybe three, four, five at the most. Okay. Uh, but the story is essentially around one student. Mm -hmm. And the sword master uh, takes one look at the student and says, no, I'm not gonna take you on as mm -hmm. a student. You're not gonna ever amount to anything. Mm -hmm. And he sends the boy away. Mm -hmm. So the boy leaves and then a short time later, he comes back and he asks the master again, well, please, you know, would you take me on as a student? Uh, I work really hard. Mm -hmm. And um, um, the master looks at him again and says, no, you're, right. you're not worthy. You're right. not going to amount to anything. Why should I waste my time with you? Mm -hmm. Get out of here. Mm -hmm. He sends him away again. Mm -hmm. And then the, 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 so the boy leaves, but then a short time later, it comes back again mm -hmm. and asks for a third time, you know, would you take me on as a student? And finally the master says, all right. And he brings him in as a student okay. and he puts him to work doing all of his chores. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's chopping wood. He's working in the garden. He's washing clothes. He's cooking food. He's cleaning house. He's doing all the things that somebody would need to have done around the house. Mm -hmm. And this goes on for a long period of time. And finally, the boy gets tired of it and goes to the master and says, all I've been doing for you for months now has been your chores. When are you ever going to teach me how to use the sword? Okay. And the master said, okay. And so the master picks up his stick and he whacks the boy with the stick. Okay. And the boy runs off. Mm -hmm. um, but short time later, he comes back and he goes back to doing his chores. Mm -hmm. But then the master sneaks up on, on him and whacks him again with the stick. Mm -hmm. And he runs off, but short time later, he comes back and he goes about doing his chores. And the master, every time the, the boy's got his back turned, the master is whacking up, coming up to him and whacking with the stick. And it even happens in the middle of the night. The, the, the boy is fast asleep in bed. The master creeps into his room and whacks him with the stick. Mm -hmm. And this goes on for several months. Mm -hmm. And the boy, though, is getting quicker and becoming more aware of what the master is doing and reaches a point where he knows the master is nearby. Um, and so he's able to quickly move out of the way and not get hit by the stick. Okay. Even in the middle of the night, he's sleeping with one eye open. When the master comes into his room, he knows it and he rolls out of bed just before the, the stick can hit him. Right. And so now for several months, the master has not been able to hit the boy. But, but he's still not teaching him how to use the sword. Mm -hmm. And so the, the boy is complaining about this. Mm -hmm. And finally, he goes up to the master while he's sitting and cooking rice, sitting on the floor. That's the way they did it back in those days. And um, the master's got his back turned to the boy. And the boy asks him, when are you going to teach me how to use the sword? You know, you haven't been able to hit me in months. Mm -hmm. um, um, and I'm just doing your chores here for you. When is, when am I going to start to learn something? And the master just says to him, you're not ready. And so this infuriates the boy. 
And the boy picks up the stick and starts to whack the master on the head. Mm -hmm. But the master knows what the boy is doing and sees all this coming. Um, and actually, he doesn't actually see it, right. but he knows he it's senses. coming. Mm -hmm. He senses it. And he takes the lid of the cook pot and brings it up and covers the head, blocks the stick. Mm -hmm. But at that moment, when the stick hits the pot lid, mm -hmm. the boy's mind is open. And he realizes what the master is doing for him. Right. And then when the master sees that this has happened for the boy, right. then the master realizes, okay, now That's you're ready. Right. And then he proceeds to teach him how to use the sword. And as the legend goes or the story goes, he becomes one of the greatest swordsmen of all Japan. Wow. Okay. So, so part of the teaching was even in him in persistence, right? So it starts from the very beginning. He's yes. told no, but he keeps coming back and he keeps coming back. Yes. And I would think that persistence come that all ties into strength and and right being prepared, right, yep. Yep. for whatever's going to come. And then and then him being hit with the stick, and then learning how to avoid it, yep. right, would be like in a sword fight. Uh, this is how yeah. I'm seeing and I could be totally wrong right and yeah. he's and he's now learned how to get out of the way and move quickly yeah. from attack yeah. right and then um and then now the fury in there is a reaction yeah. in strength and then at that point that's where the master meets the student and then he'll be yes. able to teach him the the combat yeah. That kind of my following all right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's several different lessons that are built into the story. The first lesson is that um, you have to have a strong desire. Yes. And that means if you have a strong desire to do something, then you will keep at it until you succeed. Mm -hmm. And that's what the boy did. The boy first came out. The master said, no, go away. Mm -hmm. and then the master really was testing the boy to see how strong his desire was. Right. And um, the fact that he really wanted, he kept coming back. Okay, that, that told the master that, that, okay, this boy has a strong desire to do this, mm -hmm. and meaning that he, he has a potential for being a good student. Right. Or, or a very good student. Right. And then the next thing was to te have him do chores. Now, chores are often seen as a humbling type of uh, experience. Right. And people who do chores, like cleaning for a living, for example, these are generally very humble people. Mm -hmm. And they're wonderful to be around. Yes. Um, and so humility has to be learned first. Right. And then, uh, um, then from the humility, the next thing that's learned is awareness. You mm -hmm. have to be get, develop an awareness of what's going on around you. So you're not just paying attention to yourself, mm -hmm. but you're recognizing the things that happen. Right. For example, somebody up on the roof, pounding on the roof right. while we're trying to talk. Yeah. Yes. Right. That was the last podcast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But it could be some crazy person going by outside mm -hmm. who's yelling and screaming or somebody that knocks on the door or comes in or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're being coming aware of those things. And you're not just aware when these things are a couple of feet away from you, right. but the, your awareness expands out so that you're aware of what somebody's doing when they're quite a ways away from you. Right. And in terms of self-defense, what this does is this allows you to prepare for something that might happen mm -hmm. because you recognize that it could happen long before it ever happened. Right. And so you have lots of time to prepare for it. Absolutely. And then after you have um, reached that state of awareness, now you're ready to actually start to learn <clears throat> how to use the sword or how to do the technique right. in karate is punching and kicking and blocking and striking right which draws us back to the end of the phone conversation yes right which we didn't get to in the beginning part of this podcast yes right yep. so you explain to to this parent yes what we do and why we do yes and and how um we keep repeating the same things over again because we're waiting to see something happen right. in the child and when that happens, when that awareness develops and when that child is ready, now that child is ready to move forward. Right. And but there's no point. So you don't you don't just start um, giving out, uh, telling, you know, just because a person walks in the front door doesn't mean you're going to start to feed them everything mm -hmm. that it's not. This is not something that you purchase. This is something that you earn. Right. Right. And, and and you have to mature into the person you need to be 
so that you can actually appreciate what's being taught to you. Yeah. That's a great note to end it on. It is. It is. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for that story. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed it. And I'm sure there's many more stories to come. There are. All right. Have a great day. Thank you so much.